Today on Timescast, in an unconfirmed report, the Syrian state news agency says between 80 and 120 officers were killed in a clash in a northern town. Egyptians commemorate the one-year anniversary of the death of Khaled Saeed, whose killing by police helped spark the Egyptian revolution. And an aide to President Saleh says he will return to Yemen in several days, adding to the uncertainty for the country's future. I'm in Cairo, where I've been watching Syrian state TV all day as it reports an increasing number of uh, casualties from fighting in the northern town of Jusra Shahur. Now, the TV behind me now reports 120 police officers and soldiers killed by armed gangs in and around the town. But it's been really difficult to determine what exactly happened in northern Syria, in part because state TV is not broadcasting many details or any images of the attack, uh, as the numbers have ballooned from 28 this afternoon to 120 tonight. The village where the fighting is said to have taken place is in the north near the Turkish border. Part of what is hard to understand about why the crackdown in Jisr al-Sahur has been so intense is that uh, it is a remote, poor agricultural province uh, and is kind of out of the way. People in Syria, both human rights activists and residents of the town, are very skeptical of the government's account, with one resident of the village telling us that he believed the account was fabricated to justify uh, a more harsh crackdown later. If the figures are, are true, then it really uh, injects a whole new chaotic element to the Syrian uprising, um, as questions are raised of who could kill 120 Syrian soldiers in one day. Uh, if they're not true, then it really remains to be seen what effect this will have on the government's crackdown of the uprising later. <laughs> This is David Bonte reporting for the New York Times in Cairo. It was a day of anger and remembrance here on Monday, as Egyptians marked the anniversary of a man they say is a martyr. Just a year ago, on June 6th, 28-year-old Khaled Saeed was beaten to death by police in Alexandria. Two police officers were charged with torture and other offenses, though not murder, and their trial is still ongoing. Outrage over his death led to a memorial Facebook page, and it was on this page calls for protests on January 25th went out. After the following 18 days of revolution, President Hosni Mubarak stepped down. Uh, Khalid Saeed is a symbol uh, because uh, he's uh, like every other guy, a uh, young man. So a lot of people sympathized with his story because they felt like they, he, he can be them. Egyptians marked the first anniversary of Saeed's death with a silent vigil on a bridge over the Nile River as evening rush hour traffic moved past. <laughs> Police said Saeed died after swallowing a bag of hashish to hide it from authorities. But gruesome images of his badly beaten corpse became public and caused many people to think otherwise. Elsewhere in Cairo, Saeed's death was invoked as demonstrators gathered in front of Egypt's Ministry of Interior. Several recent incidents of alleged police brutality have stoked fears that elements of the former ruling regime have yet to heed the revolution's call for justice. The revolution prompted at least in part by Saeed's death. One of the protesters was 32-year-old Nora Shalabi, who was on the revolution's front lines. Before heading to the demonstration, she took a quiet moment to reflect on Saeed. There's still so much that needs to be done, but you know, we've, we've, we've really gone a long way and, and it's, it's just something I think if Khaled Saeed was, was alive today, he would have been extremely like, shocked and happy as well about what's happened. President Ali Abdullah Saleh of Yemen has come to the Armed Forces Hospital in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia for treatment of injuries suffered in an attack on a mosque in a presidential compound in Sana'a last Friday. For months there has been this attempt by the, the Gulf Cooperation Council to create a mechanism for Saleh to step down. He was going to sign the plan agreeing to step down in exchange for immunity. After 30 days they would create an interim government and after 30 more days there would be parliamentary elections. Well, he balked three times on signing that, but now they're saying, well, he's gone, he's in Riyadh. Um, so it's like step one happened, he's not here anymore, so let's move to step two and we will move to 
um, forming an interim government. There's some ambiguity to this plan. The aides around the president in the hospital with him are saying, whoa, wait a minute, he's going to go back. There's some question about the truth of that. For both the United States and Saudi Arabia, the main priority is the stability of Yemen. There's an al-Qaeda franchise that's set up there, and they want to be able to keep that franchise in check. The ambiguity comes from the fact that they don't see who the replacement is who can you know, keep the country stable, fight al-Qaeda, um, you know, keep the borders calm, etc. So both the United States and Saudi Arabia are kind of feeling their way to see whether this sudden removal of President Saleh from the, from the direct scene creates an opportunity to sort of rewrite the political map in a way they've been trying to for months. <laughs> <laughs>